Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caraval from CK Research, and I'm here inside the Mitel Suite, the Enterprise Connect 2025, in uh, in the Biodome in Orlando. Uh, I'm with yeah. Luis Domingo, CTO of Mitel. How are you doing, Luis? I'm doing great. Doing good to see you again. Yeah, I know it's been a while, and uh, yeah. we're going to be talking innovation. You're the CTO, so it's always good to hear what's coming to your mind. And so, yep. uh, just tell me what's been going on with with Mitel from an innovation standpoint. What what have you been working on? Oh yeah, there, there's a lot of initiatives we've been driving on innovation in general. So there is a few fronts where we really put all our effort in innovation, particularly on um, experience for UC and, and CX, contact center experience, uh, hybrid solutions. You learned about our recent yeah. announcement with Zoom. So basically we work very closely with Zoom on developing the new capabilities uh, and also vertical applications. Uh, we have applications tailored to customers in vertical markets, and those vertical applications are really bringing new technology and innovation to it. So, and last but not least, of course, we are investing in AI. Yeah. And uh, a lot of novelty uh, with our announcement of Mitel CX that came in just this morning. And uh, really bringing all the AI as a foundation of our products in various dimensions of it. Yeah, now, I'm glad you brought up AI. I wanted to ask you about yeah. that because Mitel talks a lot about its AI ecosystem. Yeah. Right? And yep. I think the ecosystem is important, words important. And yep. so talk about what that means to my talent, how you use this ecosystem yep. to drive innovation into your products. Yes, we, we have on the ecos ecosystem of AI, we have several products already in the portfolio, correct? So we've been addressing that through Mitel CX, as I mentioned, but also through a set of other products, particularly our uh, Mitel interaction recordings, so for compliance recording, that also brings AI uh, insights to it. So process, processing recordings for uh, uh, sentiment analysis, for insights, for training the agents, etc. And uh, also we have our, our new product that's coming out of the door, Mitel Workflow Studio. And Mitel Workflow Studio will enable us to uh, address complex workflows with elements of AI built in. So we have our own products. We have third-party products that are part of our Mitel ecosystem of AI. And in addition, we have professional services. Yeah. We've been addressing that very intensively. Mitel is a large organization of services in general, and we have experts to help our customers identify specific use cases and then address and transform them with AI. One particular example I have is a product we call Maya, which is basically helping customers with their knowledge base and to play that back for self-service and support mm -hmm. activities in the contact center sphere. Yeah, and so that's interesting to take an ecosystem approach because my experience with AI and the models have been that some are really good at language, some are good at translation, some are good in yeah. Europe, some are better in the US, and so yeah. by taking this ecosystem approach, you can really bring the right model to that particular use case ab 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 versus ab trying to use one model. Absolutely, right. and yeah. it's a very good point because what we need for voice transcription is very different than what you need for uh, knowledge-based yeah. learning uh, uh, and, and playing back to the customer or for virtual agents or for assistance AI for contact centers. So we've been playing with a few different vendors for AI large language models. And we're also exploring now small language models. Because we see in our market that some customers want to have some extra control of their data, and they prefer to have edge AI than a cloud AI in many circumstances. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Now, you also release a product called Workflow Studio, yep. right, which helps companies, as its name was just design workflows. Yeah. And so tell me how that works and where it gets used. Yes. Uh, Workflow Studio started as something that our professional service organization has been working, and now we found that our customers need that, our partners need that, and it's a low-code, no-code platform, very simple uh, capabilities of creating workflows. Uh, we address several different connectors for text, voice, for uh, uh, ERM, CRM, ERP integrations, as well as now we have connectors for AI. So we can plug large, large language models with, and uh, that really helps you uh, bring your own language model to the flow. A very simple example, I, I keep saying, um, a very simple case of capturing a voicemail from a call, mm -hmm. yeah, and then recording that voicemail and transcribing and translating into a language. And at the same time, creating a simple uh, collaboration group that will receive that information. So that can be done uh, automatically through workflow. And we embedded large language models now. We want customers to bring their own language models if needed. So we can use that to do the, the AI functions like transcription, translation. Yeah, it's interesting that um, because AI ingests data and then creates different types of output, 
that you want to take action on, um, something like Workflow Studio almost becomes um, a must-have, right? Like how you stitch these things together now becomes, I would assume, prohibitively difficult trying to do it the manual way. Particularly because yeah. uh, flexibility, versatility in AI introduction usage is mandatory nowadays because yeah. you're not going to have a, a cookie cutter format, yeah. correct? So you need that. And Workflow Studio plays exactly in that specific area. Yeah. Now you've also got something called Mitel Labs, uh, yeah. which I find interesting because Mitel's had Mitel Labs for a long time. And if you look historically, Mitel's actually been at the very forefront of innovation you know, first to oh, make yeah. a software-based solution, first to virtualize. Yeah. And so I always like to know what's going on in Mitel Labs because it's a good indicator of where things are going. So what do you got cooking inside Mitel Labs right now? Well, very proud of our heritage, yeah. as I said, correct? In Mitel Labs, we have several areas of research. Uh, we've been, I've been working with uh, some startups and also with our own team, researching new technologies. Uh, we have three fronts of technology we've been researching. Uh, one for healthcare, patient care, elderly care. So we're looking for applications and solutions that take AI into those environments. We're also working in two other fronts for uh, IoT integration, human-machine interactions for communication. And uh, we continue to research AR, VR, even though hmm. we see that that's a little <laughs> slowed down in the last years, but it's also technology that will bring value in particular use cases uh, in certain industries. So that's one front. Uh, and also, of course, we do deep research with AI. So we're, as I mentioned before, we're researching small language models that we, we have that have low compute demand that can be deployed in the in the premise in the edge solutions of our customers. As you know, Mitel has a huge hybrid deployment yeah. out there. So we want to bring that to the customers and find some things that address their smaller needs in use cases with AI without a huge power consumption with all those GPUs that are required for large language models. And uh, also researching how we apply uh, multimodal AI to our solutions, particularly in contact center, uh, well, where you have a real use case for that. And at the same time, you need to demonstrate that you can handle with an AI agent all sorts of media that the customer is interacting with you. I actually think um, AR, VR is closer to becoming mainstream than we think for certain industries. Yeah. Uh, you, it's funny you brought up healthcare because I talked to a, um, a teaching hospital a few months ago mm -hmm. that's using VR now um, to replace cadavers. I guess cadavers are expensive, <laughs> right? Okay. And then if you want to be able to sign a, a certain disease, mm -hmm. right, then, then you have to wait for that. But now you can replicate all that. Well, right, and so it's 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 interesting you guys are looking at that because it's not something that's typically associated with the UCCC yeah. space, but I do think it's coming. Yeah, right? so, yeah, well, yeah. It, it got into a small winter, yeah? yeah. Let's put that way. But I think there are use cases that are very vertical. Uh, yeah. There's a very good use case. That's a good point. They're very vertical. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. There's a very interesting use case for remote support of very specialized industries. Correct. So yeah. companies in Germany making uh, big reactors and big equipment for uh, power plants in Africa. So and there is a problem. So you can use that with the expert remotely and the local person being guided through AR for support, for maintenance, for operations. I think there's very good use cases in communication in our area that it take advantage of those capabilities. Hmm. And then how does, and so labs is an, always an interesting yeah. um, area because sometimes you do research for research sake, yeah. other times you do it with product. And so how do you marry what you're doing in labs with, with the innovation you do in your core products? Yeah, it's a good question. and. Uh, Basically, labs is part of our portfolio life, life cycle management okay. process, correct? So we are at the entry level of the process. So basically, we do the research and the necessary assessment, proofs of concept, things that work, things that don't work. And, and there's a whole, a whole process to uh, select and filter what matters. Uh, what we do in addition, we work very closely with sales, marketing, channel partners, customers, to really f identify which are the ones that really have the, the market value that we can bring more immediately, what is long term. So we created what we call uh, the radars, which is basically tech trends identifying the la longevity, lifetime of them, and at the same time identifying the, the impact to the business. So that's how we do. And of course, internally, we try to process that and define priority, time to market, and business value as elements to decide what Mitel Labs brings to the market, to the business, and our products. Okay, that makes sense. And then I'm, I'm also curious, like uh, on the um, 
uh, on the on the endpoint side. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, that's an area. Very few vendors have stayed in the endpoint game. What, oh, yeah. what do you think about the innovation on that standpoint? Well, um, yeah, I can give you two examples of uh, endpoint innovation. One is uh, headsets, AI-driven headsets for DECT usage. Yeah. So we are launching that now. And that's very helpful. In it's like everybody thought DECT was going away. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's still very active. Yeah. And where, where is that needed? Certain industries where the employees and frontline workers need to, cannot really have their hands available, and they have the headset, retail, for example, correct? You have a lot to do in retail yeah. with headsets, but at the same time, you need your hands free for the, for the job, for the work. So that's one scenario. And the other one is specialized devices, going beyond the phone, correct? So we yeah. have launched uh, Expert, which is our uh, trading equipment, is, uh, is our multi-channel multi uh, device, correct? That allows you to do uh, command and control, trading functions, which is a specialized device, very used in certain industries, banks, airlines, command and control. And by the way, we just got it certified for JITIC. So oh. and we have uh, very good prospects and also customers in uh, US military that uh, we're going to be deploying that um, now that we finally got through the certification program. Well, good so very, very exciting. There. All right, so we've got uh, more innovation coming, uh, yep. both on the UCC side, also devices. Yep. Uh, anything else you want to add? No, well, actually, uh, everything we've been doing at Mitel, yeah. correct, so a lot of innovation in our portfolio. There's yeah. a lot coming this year, so we continue to drive that. Yeah. Certainly, there's some focus on AI, but we're trying to do AI with purpose yeah. right, to address customer use cases because just playing with AI end-to-end -end is it's really difficult and, um, and customers question value. Yeah. And I think that's what we've been doing, but certainly we continue to research. Well, to me, it. I like the approach of purpose-built AI because yeah. it yeah. helps customers solve problems versus just AI for AI's sake. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and also the additional research we've been doing in Mitel yeah. Labs that I just mentioned ago. So yeah, glad to hear from, from uh, your your listeners, yeah. your your people, and they can tell us exactly where the, the opportunities are, and feedback are, is very welcome for us. But check us on Mitel.com, and there's a lot novelty out there to share. All right, well, that's great. Uh, all right, then uh, thanks for your time. I appreciate the update on what you're doing from an innovation perspective. So on behalf of Luis Domingo, CTO of uh, Mitel, I'm Zia Scarra Valor from CK Research, and thanks for watching. Uh, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on the next episode of CCAST. Thanks, Luis. Thanks for having me.